Hi, everyone on YouTube and all the NFL YouTube prognosticators and football fans everywhere. This is Andrew Warren, back here once again, giving you my early NFL predictions and my early NFL playoff predictions. Check it out. Well, before I get to my picks, I need to get something out. You know, there was a recent report with LeBron James, which we all get that about the criticism about the fans in Boston. And let me tell you, as a perspective, I'm a I'm from the Boston area. I could tell you, dude, LeBron James is not wrong on this. I'm a Boston fan myself, and there were some times that left me embarrassed and stuff like that, and everything like that. And and I'm not a person who wants to drop anything like that or bring out racial slurs and anything like that. But I'm a fan of all the Boston sport teams. But on the flip side, on the fans, sometimes I just the fans are just like, oh my god, what the hell are they thinking? I'm like, really? I understand you want to, don't like the opposing teams and stuff like that. And that's fine. Especially what happened in the NBA Finals. They had to did with Draymond Green and stuff like that. It kind of left me embarrassed. I mean, come on. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was rooting for the Celtics to win. But for God's sakes, I mean, you don't drop stuff like that around the opposing teams like that. I mean, come on. I mean, it's just like... Just give me a break, you know, and stuff like that. Um, let me tell you, I'm from the area, but I'm here to tell you, I mean, enough is enough with that. I mean, I don't really care what your political beliefs are or where you're from and stuff like that. You got to treat them with respect. I mean, not for nothing. I mean, I don't really like when fans do stuff like that, when they throw out racial slurs and stuff like that. And I've witnessed it in some games and stuff like that. Bruins games, Red Sox games, and me, and stuff, and the Celt and the Celtics game not too long ago. I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, enough is enough about this already. Look, I get it that you don't like LeBron James. He doesn't play for us. Would you root for him when he was a Celtic? So that's all I'm saying about that. I mean, not for nothing, but you know, for people who are Boston sports fans, I'm not saying everybody. I'm not saying everybody, but enough is enough with that. I mean, it's re it's really sickening and stuff like that. I mean, I understand that you don't you know, you don't like them because they don't play for the team, for the Celtics or the Bruins or the Red Sox or the Patriots and stuff like that. But you can't just drop racial slur after racial slur like that. I mean, enough is enough with that. It makes me sick to my stomach, make me embarrassed to be a fan and stuff like that. I mean, I would never do anything like that. I mean, I just wanted to get that out of the way right now because it's, it's something like that that shouldn't be happening right now. I mean, they're playing the game they love, and you know, and so are the the Boston um, players too. I mean, I mean, come on, this is not this is not how how we are supposed to be. Just treat them with respect. You, they treat you respect, re respect them back. I mean, enough is enough about this. I mean. I, sometimes it just want to make me want to throw up when when I hear stuff like that from the Boston sports fans, and I, I'm telling you right now, I witnessed it myself, and I just kind of left me disgusted like that. I mean, I just want to. Ha All I want to do is just have fun with my friends and enjoy the game, whether they like the Bruins or the Red Sox or the Celtics or the Patriots losing on. I just want to spend time with them when I'm going to the games and stuff like that. I'm not here for stuff like uh, hear anything like that. I mean. I'm not saying about all the all the fans, but just some of them. You know, there are some who are not like that, and some are. And the some that are, you need to stop acting like immature children and become more mature. I mean, that's all I'm saying. I mean, I don't really care what political beliefs you are or whatever you're standing and stuff like that. I mean, enough is enough already. You know, I'm like, it's, it just much makes you feel embarrassed and stuff like that. All right, that's all I have to say about that. I'm not sure this is going to be a little incident like that. So, anyways, let's get on to my early picks. First off, let me apologize for that statement, but, I mean, that's a statement I needed to get out of there. I mean, that's something I don't want to hear anymore. I mean, that's... I mean, I'm not a person who's like that. I'm like, I'm not a here. I'm just here to bring you my predictions and stuff like that and have some fun with it. That's all. Anyways, that being said, let's get on to my um, early predictions. Let's kick things off in the NFC side, starting with the NFC East. 
and we'll go on straight from there. For the NFC East, last year was all anything gifts and stuff like that. Nobody wanted that division at all. It was kind of like a tanking division like last year. So anyways, that being said, I think this is going to be a much different situation right now. I mean, this is going to be a very, very close um, one, but I think my, my inch is right, you know, if I'm going to say this. Well, well, I wouldn't say hypothetically with that, but but I'm gonna say um, there is one team I'm not probably not gonna be too crazy about, but I think if it's gonna be correct, I think this is gonna be one team that's gonna win the NFC East this year. It's gonna be Jerry Jones's world. It's gonna be the Dallas Cowboys. So uh, I'm gonna say this for a reason because they did what they needed to do. They didn't, they needed to get an offensive tackle, and they did that in Taylor Smith on the 24th pick in the first round. And they got Sam Williams from Oil Miss, in which Taylor Smith is from Tulsa, for a defensive tackle in the second round, which they needed to fix those holes. And what other one they did was um, they had re-signing um, wide receiver uh, Michael Gallup, who I think was a talented wide receiver in that scenario, which is signed a five-year, $60.5 million contract. You won't lie about that one. That was a smart move from Dallas. I think Michael Gallup is a really good player. I really think he's going to make a really big difference in Dallas, though. But I really think he's going to make it all ends on it this year. So, And I think that's the reason why. I think Dallas is going to be really good. And, of course, I think Dak Prescott, I think he's going to do great this year. So he should. I think he should have gotten comeback player of the year last year, which I'm pretty sure he did, but I don't remember right now. But, anyways, that being said, I think Dallas is going to get that division. And just like last year, 12 and 5, I think that they're going to go and be back in 12 and 5 this year. They're going to be they're going to be back in that scenario. So I'm going to take Dallas winning the A when the NFC East at 12 and 5. I'm going to put them in the third seat. I'm going to go to the uh, NFC side, uh, NFC North. So in that case scenario for the NFC North, this is when Aaron Rodgers finally got his way in there. Decide I'm gonna be staying and everything like that with Aaron Rodgers. I so Aaron Rodgers is officially back for sure, which I believe it was in March that he resigned. So, and I mean, not all men in there are like that, you know. But in there, so that's gonna be a big, big hole. And I'm gonna take the Green Bay Packers because of that resigning Aaron Rodgers. They are gonna get the NFC North this year. And and what I think about this one, and for the, I think they're going to be in the same record as Dallas, but I think they're going to beat Dallas this year. I think they're playing each other this year, if I'm not mistaken. So, anyways, I think what if they do, I think that's going to settle it. I think Green Bay is going to win it. So, I'm going to take Green Bay as the number two seed in this in this thing, because and yeah, I'm not going to lie. In the draft this year, I think they did pretty good. They got a trade from Vegas. They got and they picked up a linebacker and Quay uh, Walker and Devon for um, and of course Devonte Watt for a defensive tackle from Georgia from both from both players on there. And they did pretty good on that. I think they hit a home run off of that. So I think they did pretty good on that part. So I think getting um, a linebacker and a defensive tackle and to fix the defensive side of the ball. And getting Aaron Rodgers to resign back, I think that's going to give them the NFC North potential on that one. So I think I'm going to take uh, Green Bay getting 12 and five in the number two seat to the N the NFC South. Well, for the NFC South, this is a much a lot of twists and turns on this one, and not because of the teams, because of some trades at the last minute and stuff like that. That being said, Tom Brady's still there. But I'm gonna give you a nice plot twist out of that one. I think he's gonna make a great head, the great head coach in there, losing um, yeah, yeah, losing Bruce Arians out of retirement, which is pretty good. Which technically I thought that was gonna be Tom Brady. Now it switched out to be Bruce Arians in there. So and now Rob Gronkowski's not there, so he's getting for calling it a career for good. And um, that leads to Todd Bowles. Finally gets another chance. And I think because of that, I think getting another good coach in there, not saying Todd Bowles, you know, in there is a bad thing. But hey, you know, I'm like, 
That being said, they got Tom Brady still on there. Because of that, I like Tampa Bay still winning that division. And I won't lie. I'm going to take Tampa Bay number one seed in this one. I think Tampa Bay has a redemption going on in there. And I think it's going to be a plot twist to this. They're going to be your number one seed for one reason. I think they want to get redemption on the Rams right now, which I'll get to the Rams in a bit because I just spoiled the alert from the NFC West right now. So, But anyways, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're going to be your number one seed in the NFC East and yeah, they're going to be the first round by. And let's get on to the NFC West. I just spoiled it for you. It's the LA Rams. I think the LA Rams... They're gonna do. Um, they're gonna go back to the end. It's a, maybe uh, the number four seed because they just lost some um, coaching. They just lost. They didn't do anything in the draft. But I, st- I still really don't think they're gonna do much in there. I mean, they didn't get anything in the first two rounds, and sometimes it's gonna backfire a little bit. But I won't lie. You know, they did pretty good with the Matthew Stafford trade, and they won that trade for sure. And I, I think that not because of that, but I think I'm um, losing a lot of head coaching positions, stuff like that. The, the Kevin, they got like when uh, the Vikings um hired um offensive coordinator Kevin O'Connell, which that which I think that's gonna be good from their part. So that's gonna be a really a a good one in there for Minnesota. But they lost a lot of coaching changes. That sometimes that could affect them. So and I think um Chris O'Hara is I think he's gonna be the quarterbacks coach. And I think and I think West Phillips. I think Wade Phillips' son. I think it was Wade. I believe that's his son, but I'm not mistaken. I think Wade Phillips' is son there, Wes Phillips, is in there. Is gonna is in there, which oh, I think it was a grandfather of Bum Phillips or something like that. Somewhere in the family, I think. I think he's in that family, but I if I heard something, if I'm not mistaken. But when and yeah, so I think I believe um so I believe that Wes Phillips is gonna gonna be great offensive um coordinators and stuff like that. So picking a wet um. Wade Phillips' son is a really good part on that one, so I think that's going to be a big help. And they, and yeah, because of that, I think that's going to be in there. And on uh, Zach Robinson, I think who got a left for a head coaching position too for in there for the Titans, I think for a defense assistant, something like that. But I know he left a lot of coaching changes in there. So and sometimes that could be affecting too. But I think they're still going to win that division in there, and they're going to be at least a ten and seven team. And they, I mean, I'm sorry, 11 and 16, my fault. And they're going to be the number four seed. Your two wild cards. Well, three wild cards, excuse me. Yeah, I think, and it's going to be one in the NFC North. And I'll get to that one right now. And it's the, the Minnesota Vikings. Yes, I said it, the Minnesota Vikings. I won't lie, a Chicago be in the race, but I still, I still think more work to do for, uh, I still think they have more work to do. Sure, the Chicago picked up Nikhil Harry, help for Justin Fields, but Justin Fields needs protection. I think they still need a little work on the defensive side of the ball. But I don't think Nikhil Harry, they traded him for a seventh round draft pick. I'll say this. I'm not saying bad about Nikhil Harry, but if you if you're a, if Bill Belichick gives up on you and you're a talented football player, I think it's time to look for another occupation right now. I don't think it's going to work out for Chicago with that right now. Hate to say it. I'm not going to say anything bad about Nikhil Harry. Great blocker, but he can't catch. He can't really catch much on anything. He didn't. So, but I'm not saying anything bad other than that for Nikhil Harry. I think he had a great potential in college, but I think he's going to be a bust. So I think that's what we're going to say. So I think it's going to be in the bust category along with um, not Jamarcus Russell, you know. Ugh, not Ryan Leaf. Not the same thing he's going to do me guys like that to get arrested and stuff like that. But, you know, just there's there's some guys who are bust and there's are guys who are successful. And unfortunately, Nikhil Harry wasn't the case for that. But I wish him best in Chicago. Hope things work out over there for him. And just wish it worked out here. That's all. So anyways, that back to Minnesota. I think that getting um, a safety in the draft in the 32nd pick and the last pick in the first round, the Lewis Kane in there for the University of Georgia, which it got from the Rams and Lions trade and stuff like that. And because of that, I think Minnesota got a great safety in there. 
in there. So I think that's going to help them in the defensive side of the ball. And I think the defense will get them into the playoffs. That's why I got the Minnesota Vikings in there as your wild card spot in there. And for the NS and for the other wild card, you're not going to believe who I got. I got the Carolina Panthers in there. Yeah, you you say it. Hold on, let me see that one more time. Yep. I I wrote it in my notes on my laptop. All right, hold on. Just give me one minute. Yeah, I just lost, I just lost it in there for a minute. I originally put the Washington the Washington Commanders in there, which a new team. But I just after what Carolina just did, I think they just put punched their ticket to the playoffs because of this one move they did. But sure, they picked up a sure they put in the draft they picked up an offensive tackle, which something they needed in the draft. But, however, they I think they finally picked up a quarterback that they needed. They picked up a quarterback in yeah, Matt Carroll in, in there from Oil Miss, but I think they I think they're gonna probably just trade him now. So but that being said, I think I'm gonna say they trade they traded up for Baker Mayfield in that in just a few weeks ago. And I think that's gonna be they're gonna be one of the not a first you know, they're gonna be probably one a team that didn't make the playoffs last year to a team that will make the playoffs. I think they will be finally in there. I got, I got them at a 10-7 mark. And so did Minnesota, by the way, which I forgot to mention. I got Minnesota 10-7. and seven. So did Carolina. I got Carolina 10-7 and seven as well. I think they're going to go from 5-12 and 12 to 10-7 and seven and return to the playoffs for the first time in 2017. So I really think they're going to do Them, They finally uh, picked up a trade from there. They, I think... Put up putting putting Baker Mayfield in there. It's a blessing in disguise for him. He's gonna get Carolina in the playoffs, and all what they did. So, and and like I said, picking up um, and I think Matt Rule. I think he's gonna he's on. I think going him there. I think he just did what he needed to do, and there he's on the uh, job state staking right there. He doesn't go in the playoffs. He's gone. So that's what I say about that. But picking up Baker Mayfield. And getting um an offensive tackle from NC State, Akeem, I, th- I think it's well known, Akeem, Akeem Ekinoe or something like that. I I can't pronounce his last name. I'm really bad with that. I forgive me if I spit, uh, said his name wrong, but him going to NC State and coming in the getting an offensive tackle, this is something really good for Baker Mayfield to get. So right now, so this is really good. And because of that trade that Carolina did, I believe they're going to punch their ticket to the playoffs and get a wild card spot. And the last one from the NFs for the NFs for the wild card spot, the the last wild card spot's going to get. Well, by the way, Minnesota is going to be number seven, and Carol and Carolina will be. Hold on, excuse me, number five. Yep, you heard me. Carolina's going to get number five on this one. And for the number six spot for the for the wild card spot, I got the Arizona Cardinals this year. I won't lie, signing Kyle Murray the other day, well yesterday or something like that, that was a big big move on that part. And getting a tight end in Trey McBride from Colorado State, that's gonna give him some weapons to help out for for him right now. I really think getting helping up him out on offense will get him that. And the question is, will they get over the hump? And if it, if they get into the playoffs and lose again, I I'm gonna say this: getting Steve Kern's job and Cliff Kingsbury job. I know they signed multiple deals. Dick Johns could be on the line this year if they don't get over the hump. The question is, and if they can, it's gonna be, like they're gonna get they're gonna get players back at half of the year. I think. I'm trying to think, and there was. In there, stuff like that, you know. I think I think there was suspension or an injury or something from. I forget who it was, but you know, but losing got uh, guys like um, I. Fr- I think it was AJ Green. I think it was no, no, getting AJ Green out for eight weeks or something like that. That's gonna be or no, I think it's DeAndre Hopkins. So they got AJ Green there, which is gonna help Arizona a lot, which on the offensive side of the ball. But they're juggling with the uh, NFC West with the Rams right now. So I think they're going to be over that in the playoff spot and probably do stuff like that. And they'll be our number six seed in the NFC. And that's my um, NFC predictions. Let's get on with the AFC predictions. All right, now let's get on to the AFC side, starting with the AFC East. 
All right, for the AFC East, this is going to be a, a really, really interesting division this year. A lot of young talent in there, a lot of great coaches. But I can only pick one to win the AFC East, and I hate, hate to do it. It's not going to be my Patriots, but hold on thought. There's going to be something going on with the Patriots, but not just yet. But that being said, I think this division is going to go to the, the Buffalo Bills right now. I think Buffalo is still going to get that division. So I think that, as for right now, but, you know, but but for Buffalo, they did pretty good They in the draft. They drafted a cornerback in the, in the yeah, Carling from Florida. So I think that's in the 23rd pick. I think they're going to be doing something with that. I think they picked up a great corner right there. So I think that being said, I think that's going to be really, really good for Buffalo. But I think they're going to get 12-5 and five in that division to be your number three seed in that one. But sure, I mean, Josh Allen, I think he's going to be doing his thing right now. He's going to be be looking at a great offense right there. Probably good defense too, by the way. But, you know, but, you know, I'm like, there's going to be a lot of question marks on the defensive side of the ball. But they did pick up a cornerback. And I hope their secondary does pretty well. But but if if they can't get to the playoffs like he did, there is going to be a lot of question marks for Buffalo right now. But questionable decisions. But I'm not going to say anything bad about Sean McDermott and stuff like that. I think he's a hell of a coach. But if he doesn't get to the Super Bowl this year, or at least beat Kansas City in the playoffs or something like that, there's got to be a change going to happen in Buffalo. Not saying he's a bad coach or anything like that. Usually stuff like that, you need another voice or stuff like that if you don't get into there. But hey, hey not going to say anything bad about Josh Allen, though. They have a great offense out there. Great defense. Not my team. What are you going to do? You know, I'm like, not a Bills fan. Hey, what can you do? You know, I'm like, <laughs> but I won't lie. You know, Buffalo, I think they're, I think it's going to be, I think Josh Allen's going to have a great year. I'll get to that one a bit. But, but I still think Buffalo is going to get the division and they're going to be a number three seed in this one. It's going to be a close division. I'll tell you why next soon. But first, it's the AFC North. But, the AFC North, I think this is a not going to be a hangover team this year, and that's going to be the Cincinnati Bengals. I think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to be the top dog in that division for a while. Hey, I won't lie, Pittsburgh did what they needed to do in the draft. They did all they did, did what they needed to do and everything like that. But I still think that Pittsburgh's going to be a young core right now. I think they're not going to be in rebuilding mode. I think they're going to Pittsburgh's going to be doing what built, the Patriots did not too long ago. With under Mac Jones and stuff like that, and rebuild on offense and work your way up. So I think that's what Pittsburgh is going to be doing right now. That and everything, but you never know. You know, I'm like, you never know. They could get the wild card or anything. But I, as far as I'm concerned, I think they're going to be figuring themselves out before they get to the playoffs back in the yeah, upcoming seasons. But as of right now, it's a a learning experience for Pittsburgh. But as of right now, Cincinnati is going to be the top dog in that division, and I really. And they did with, and they and they drafted well too, for Cincinnati. I and I think they drafted a safety and um, Daxon Hill, which and they picked on stuff like that, and they gave up a lot of sacks this year, you know. That nah, uh, I have to, say, I hate to say it, but you know, for for the roster, I hate to say it right now, but Joe Burrow, he gave up a lot of a lot of sacks this year, but you know. I was surprised they didn't really pick a guard to get anyone. Well, they did sign a guard from Tampa Bay and Alex Kappa for four years. So they did stuff like that. And they you know, drafted a safety in Daxton Hill from Michigan. I think that's going to be a big, big help for them. So on the defensive side of the ball. So I think in Cincinnati, I really think they're going to be a really top contender right now. So so I really think they're going to be a top contender in the AFC North. Cleveland just went on a downside. Pittsburgh is rebuilding. And Baltimore, I, they have a lot of question marks on Baltimore right now. And if they choke again, this is gonna not going to be really good for Baltimore's case right now. And Baltimore, they had a they had the division in there, and it is choked in there for a 9-6 and six at one of the worst collapses in a long time. So... But I still think they're in a not, and they still need help on defense. And if their defense is going to be a question mark, I'm not too sure about that. So that's why I'm going to pick Cincinnati to win that division. And I think they're going to be a 13 and four seed. 
be your number one seed in the AFC. We're going to go to the AFC South this time. And I'm not going to lie at this one. I debated on this one really, really well. And I hate this. I'm gonna, you're going to be a surprise with this one. I think it's going to be an upset division pick on this one. I believe Tennessee's the favorite to win that division. But I'm picking the upset pick. And I really like what the cons did in this one. They, And I'm going to say the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to win that division. You heard me say this. The Jacksonville Jaguars are going to get this division. The reason why I say it, I think there's the reason why I say it, they picked up a really good co head coach in Doug Peterson right there, the former Cincinnati Philadelphia Eagle head coach. And he's been in the in experience before. And I'm not going to lie with this. The what, what Doug Peterson is going through right now is the same situation what the uh, Philadelphia Eagles were in when Doug Peterson got there. And getting Doug Peterson in there is a blessing in disguise for the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. I think he's going to get that division. And he's going to turn the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars around. And this is going to be a worst the first team this year. You heard me say it. Get in, get in the Kongs. Um, getting rid of Urban Meyer. Getting Doug Peterson in. It's kind of like with uh, it's kind of like when the Philadelphia Eagles and when they had Chip Kelly in there, they brought in Doug Peterson, and look what Doug Peterson did. He brought Doug Peterson and got him a Super Bowl championship in Super Bowl Fifty Three, and you know he got him a championship down there, and he, with all the success that Chip Kelly brought in, this is the exact situation where Doug Peterson's in right now, what Urban Meyer did, and now uh, all of a sudden, you know. This isn't the same situation. They have the talent there. They just needed a head coach. And and I got something for Doug Peterson as, as well. And I really think this is going to be your worst or first team. And I think they're going to be the, your division champs in the AFC South. Don't get me wrong with with the Indianapolis Colts and in the, in the Tennessee Titans. I think Tennessee Titans are going to go to a downfall this year. But it's going to be a really, really close division, I think. But I really think... Uh, Getting Doug Peterson in Jacksonville is a blessing in disguise for them. And I really think this is going to be your worst of first team. So, And I got the Jacksonville Jaguars as your number four seed. And you're going to be 11-6 and six team. So I really think this is going to be your worst of first team. And I think this is the Jacksonville Jaguars. And look, I like what they did in the draft too. They got a defensive end in Georgia for Trayvon Walker. And Devin Lloyd, the linebacker, which on in Utah... I think they just really hit the nail on the defense. And and Jacksonville's defense was just really bad. And getting and getting those two in there, I think this is going to be a really, really good scenario around that. I think they're going to be doing something about that. So your number one seed, well, your number four seed is going to be a Jacksonville Jaguars right now. And they're going to be in, your, in, in there for your AFC South winners. For the NFC West? Hmm. I still think I I'm not gonna lie from from this scenario. The there's a lot of great scenarios in the NFC West. It was just I think there's gonna be a lot of uh, teams that are gonna get into the playoffs in this division. But I have to pick a division winner, and that's gonna be the Kansas City Chiefs, and they're gonna be your number two seed. And they in Kansas City will be uh, will be a twelve and five team. And I think they're going to be in that division. But picking up a cornerback in Trent uh, McDuffel from Washington and picking a defensive end in George Carlos as, um in Purdue, I think that's going to be really, really good on their part on that one. They didn't do much in free agency, but they did some in the draft. And they did some in the draft with my Patriots, too, which I will get to that in them in a bit. But anyways, that being said, your number two seed was going to be the Kansas City Chiefs being the number two seed, and they're going to win the NFC West. Those are my division winners. Let's get to the wild card spot, picking at number five. And number five right now, this is something that I think this is going to be really good on their part, and that's going to be my New England Patriots. Hey, I'm not going to lie. I was one of the guys who said linebacker would help the Patriots out. And hey, they're they're right about they're right about one thing about the Patriots did they picked up a guard and Cole Strange in the draft, which I think that's going to be really help on Mac Jones's part picking up a guy like him 
in a she had a Conda University, whatever. I forget the name of the university he was in right now. It's just uh, I, I forget the name of it right now, but it was somewhere out there. But picking up a guard in Cole Strange was really good. They needed a guard to protect Matt Jones. I say, why not use it? You know, they need they need protection for Matt Jones. But anyways, and picking up Traycon Thornton in there, it's good, really good as really good as well. And I I got something for him too. On that part. I'm going to make a surprise prediction on that coming up really soon. But picking up those two guys in the first round. From the Cole Strange and Traycon Thornton from Baylor. It's going to really help the Patriots offense right now. And I really think this is going to help my New England Patriots on the offensive side of the ball. Right now. I really can see something like that going to be in there. So I think they're going to get your number 5 pick and your wild card prediction in there. And I'll, and I'll tell you more about the Patriots in a bit. But... But for the number six team, it's going to be the L.A. Chargers in this one. I think, um, it, yeah, and just, I think getting Justin Herbert as your quarterback in there, it's going to be an offensive team. But if you're going to a team like the um, the Kansas City Chiefs, it's going to be hard to beat. So, but I'm going to say the Chargers are going to be your, going to get the ten and seven team. Oh, I forgot the Patriots are going to be eleven and six, by the way. But the L.A. Chargers are going to be ten and seven. I'm going to be a number six team, and they're going to be an offensive team as well. Not, I'm not sure about the defense right now. And for the number seventh team, it's going to be the Las Vegas Raiders in this one. Yeah, I say the Vegas Raiders. I say the Vegas Raiders because getting in there, getting the Vegas Raiders, I think this is going to be really good. And in there, yeah, for the Vegas Raiders, they didn't really do much. In the draft, they didn't really do much in free. Well, they got some stuff in free agency. They got, they picked up guys from, I th- they got Devonte Adams. They picked up a fifth round pick from the Raiders as well out of that, and they got a, and they picked up a backup quarterback in Jared Stedham for the Patriots in that part. So, and and they picked up Chandler Jones. They picked him. Up, they picked him up from Arizona. So I think they picked stuff like that out there and a linebacker and everything like that. So anyways, that being said, I think the Vegas Raiders are going to be a number seven team in getting Josh McDaniels in there, and they're going to be a an, an nine and eight team. So they're going to be the seventh spot in the wild card. There you have it. My um my AFC um, predictions are right there. Let's get on to my early playoff predictions. All right, let's now we're into the playoffs right now. Like guys, let's start with the AFC this time. So. I got the number two seed, the Kansas City Chiefs, taking on the number seven Vegas Raiders. This is going to be a fun one to watch. I really think this is going to be a great, great battle. So, but I think for this one, that Kansas City has um, the some reason they ought to play the division teams really well. So I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs to beat that one to move on to beat the go to the next round of the playoffs. And the LA Chargers and the Buffalo Bills, there you have it. The LA Chargers and the Buffalo Bills on that one. This is going to be another offensive battle like the Bills and Chiefs last year. So I think this is going to be a good scenario on that one. But I think Buffalo's going to get that one on top of that one. I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills to win that division because of their playoff experiences. Now here's an interesting part right here. I think, I hate to say it, but Bill Belichick, he, the job could be on the line because Robert Kraft said in the offseason, he hasn't had a they haven't had a playoff win in four years or something like that in 2018. Intent. I think them getting guys like Traycon Thornton in there and Cole Strange. I think they're going to be helping success on the offensive side of the ball. I got number number five New England uh, Patriots and the number four Jacksonville Jaguars in there. My upstart playoff prediction is going to be not one right there. I think the play, Patriots are going to get their first playoff win in four years. And they're going to be moving on to the next round. And they're going to be upsetting the Jacksonville Jaguars, technically, I think. I mean, if you could call it that. So, I'm going to take my New England Patriots to move on to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, and number one, Cincinnati, in face of my the New England Patriots in there. And number three, Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs in a playoff rematch. Their third playoff experience in three years. I think that's what's going to happen in the division round again. And everything like, like that. For Cincinnati, for the Patriots in Cincinnati, it could be a close game on that one for an early prediction. But I'm gonna have to rule with the Cincinnati Bengals 
in this one. He had Joe Burrow in there. And they do play each other this year. And I think, um, and this could be a toss-up for that game as well. But I think Cincinnati has the edge on this one. And I think they're going to beat my New England Pages in the division round. And they're going to go to the AFC Championship game. And for the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs, another close game. But I have to go with the, go with the home field advantage on that one for the Kansas City again. And that's going to be um, Kansas City again because I won't lie. You know, I'm not going to say anything about bad about Josh Allen and everything like that. But but if you're going to Kansas City, though, that's a really tough place to play. And you have no questions and errors on that whatsoever. And there you go. Your conference championships, a rematch from last year, Cincinnati and Kansas City, but this time in Cincinnati on this one. But I think that case scenario for the second straight year, Cincinnati's going to go to the uh, Super Bowl again because I think... Um, I think the trades from from the my Patriots are really gonna cost the the Kansas City Chiefs to go to the Super Bowl, and I think that's the reason why why I'm picking the Cincinnati to win this one. So you heard me correct. Your AFC champions for the early predictions, the second year in a row, it's gonna be the Cincinnati Bengals, and I'm and they're a sleeper this year too, and I'm not gonna lie about that. All right, that being said, for the uh, for the NFC side, number two, the Green Bay Packers, and number seven, Minnesota Vikings. I'll say this. I will say this for the life of me. Now, Aaron Rodgers knows how to beat the division teams in the playoffs. I'm going to pick the, Aaron, the Green Bay Packers to win that division. So, early prediction, the Green Bay Packers m- might move on to get against the Green Bay Pack against the Minnesota Vikings on this one. So I'm going to pick the Minnesota Vikings go to the division round. And they're probably going to go get the winner of the Arizona-Dallas series, which I got Arizona number six, Dallas number three. And I think it's going to be the the Dallas Cowboys in this one because they did what they needed to do to protect um and do what they, like I mentioned, in the draft. And, and picking up and they're picking up God. And then, like I mentioned, they picked up and stuff. They did what they needed to fix their offense and get pick, fix their defense, and I think they're going to be a team to beat this year, which I think they will. And I think Dallas is going to beat Arizona in this one, and they're going to go right to the division round. And then facing the they're facing the winner of the Rams and the Carolina Panthers, which which is the Carolina Panthers number five and the Rams number four. And I'm going to say this. The the LA Rams are gonna beat the Carolina Panthers this one because I think Carolina they still have work to do on defense. <laughs> and they do I still think they need to work on the defense side of the ball a little more, and that's gonna really cost the LA cost them the playoff win against the LA Rams, and I think the LA Rams are gonna move on. And here you go. Number one Tampa Bay, number four the LA Rams, and number three Dallas, and number two Green Bay. So let's start with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the LA Rams, the two eventual Super Bowl winners from 2020 and 2021, respectively. But now they get to face each other as the number one and number four seed in this one, respectfully. And Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think they're going to go for redemption from a year ago, and I think they're going to go out in a bang and beat out the Tampa Bay, the, the defending champs, the, the LA Rams. I think they're going to move on to the NFC Championship game in that one. And the Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers, hey, you know, I think I think going in there, and especially going in Green Bay, though, with it's really cold and freezing out there, I'm thinking that um, the Green Bay Packers are going in this one and they beat the Dallas Cowboys in this one. And and I think it's going to be a conference uh, championship rematch from a couple years ago. I think this is going to be the uh, Green Bay Packers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but this time it's going to be in Tampa in this one. And I think with the edge of your seats in this one, I think Tampa Bay is going to go out and win this one. So, so I think Tampa Bay is going to beat out the it because it's Tom Brady. He knows how to beat Aaron Rodgers. I'll say that lately. So I'm going to take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the Green Bay Packers to win this one. And your my early Super Bowl predictions, it's going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Cincinnati Bengals. I have those two on the Super Bowl this year, and I'll say this. I think Tom Brady's last ride is going to be this. He's going to come out as a Super Bowl champion in this one. So I think my early prediction right now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be our Super Bowl champions. And 
I think on top of that, for Tom Brady, your Super Bowl MVP, and he's going to go out on a high note. So, you heard me say that. Your Super Bowl um, 52 winners are going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady, your Super Bowl MVP. And, hey, while we're at it, you know, let's go on with the NFL MVP, rushing champion, rookie of the year, and coach of the year. So, hint, all of them in the AFC side. So, and for NFL MVP, I got Josh Allen for the Buffalo Bills. I think he's going to rack up some good numbers this year in the quarterback rating. I think he's going to be your MVP. Rushing champ, Jonathan Taylor from the Indianapolis Colts. I really think he's going to help them out from have some great success in there. And I think uh, Jonathan Taylor is going to get the rushing championship award. And hey, rookie of the year, this is where my page is going. I think Trey Conthorne is going to get rookie of the year. Having the running legs like a running back, I think it's going to help the Patriots out in success. And I think we're going to, I think we're finally going to get a wide receiver in this. So rookie of the year, I think I'm going to get Trey Conthorne in there. And then coach of the year, Doug Peterson. So I got Doug Peterson as your coach of the year because I think all the success he's going to pull off in Cincinnati, I mean, at Jacksonville right now, he's going to be your coach of the year. Well, there you have it. My early NFL predictions in the books. I will definitely see you all in week one with all the scenarios to know. And importantly, my major announcement, though, I'm on edge of the seat right now because I'm going to be back in school. I have one test left to do so I can finish uh, my degrees and stuff like that. So I am just have one test left, and that's it. And it might be a factor in this one. I might have to do my um, predictions on Monday or maybe on a or early before the Monday night football games or maybe something like that. Or it could be later in the week, like – or. At, like a Thursday, if it's a after Thursday night, I might have to give him my early predictions on on how who I picked and stuff like that. So I might have to do stuff like that. I have to, I play around with my school schedule this year. It's gonna be really tough, but I have one test left to do, and that's all I do. I might graduate this year. I don't know. I'm I'm not thinking about it. I just gonna I just want to finish this test, and that's it. So and so about my my scheduling conflicts, it's gonna be really rough this year. But I'm gonna try to get it in early as I can. Or maybe it may have to be later in the week. I don't know. But I just want to give you that scenario right now. I have to finish school out, you know, and, and take care of that. I want my degree. And I might, and I want to get it this year. So I'm going to be working on that. And I'm going to try to flex into my um, football predictions too. So that being said, that's all I wanted to tell you about that one. I want to wish you all good luck for your early predictions if you're going to do it. And, hey, well, and I'll see you all in week one when we do my, our um, NFL predictions. Hey, football is just right on the to- corner, and I can't wait. Until then, this is Andrew Warren signing off and saying, rock out.